Okay, good afternoon. So it's only us who are sitting between you and your lunch, so let's get going. Let me introduce ourselves. Uh, here is Zoltan Boruknaj, and I'm Gabor Kasob. We are working both for the same company, Cloudera. Uh, we have been contributing to Apache Impala for seven years now. We are both PMCs, and we have spent our last couple of years on the integration work between Apache Impala and Apache Iceberg. We had a really nice uh, presentation uh, yesterday about the functionality and now we will focus on uh, the actual performance that this can give and before we move on let me do a quick survey about how well you know these projects so would you mind raising your hand if you have heard about Impala and you know what it is for nice thanks uh, would you do the same for Iceberg do you know Iceberg okay more hands for Iceberg then but uh, I can, we can guess that everyone is familiar with the technology. So in just very briefly, Impala is a, a massively parallel SQL query engine that is optimized for speed, while Iceberg is a table format that is often referred, referred to as an alternative to the good old uh, Hive table formats. So in order to understand the presentation, just cover a very brief architecture about Impala. So what happens when someone uses Impala as one of, one of Impala's clients, like Impala Shell, ODBC, JDBC, to run a SQL query? It will go to one of uh, Impala daemons. So Impala has uh, running multiple daemons and multiple nodes in a cluster. Uh, need, uh, these daemons can act as uh, coordinators, executors, or actually both. So in this example, this uh, query goes into one of our coordinators, and then the coordinator's responsibility to do some parsing, uh, some analysis, and also it uh, creates a query pl plan based on the SQL text. The query plan is like a, a tree that can be given to the executors so that an executor can do their work. What the coordinator also does is does some scheduling. Uh, scheduling means here is that when you know what files are actually affected by this query, so what files we should read for answering the query, it will uh, allocate them for different nodes, keeping it uh, account that Impala wants uh, maximum data locality in terms of reads, so it will send files to executors where those files are local. Uh, so what happens next is that uh, the coordinator gives the the query plans and all these kind of metadata to the executors, and then the executors will start doing their job. They will read rows, they will do some joins, aggregation, and all kind of this SQL magic that happens here. Once they have rows available, then these rows will start flowing back to the coordinator, and then the coordinator in turn will send the rows back uh, to the client. So I mentioned query plans. Let's see how they look like. Uh, I brought you a simple example about a join. Here we had two tables, A1 and A2, and we joined them based on some join conditions. Also do some filtering, and then we group by resulting rows, and we calculate the count and the average for each group. So in terms of a query plan, and if you see this in this black box, at the very bottom you see a scan node that scans the table A1. If you move your eyes a little bit uh, over, then there is another scan node that, is scans, that scans A2, and uh, then there is the join node and also some aggregation nodes. Uh, what is important for this part of this uh, presentation is the exchange nodes. So what these are. So we can, for example, see one exchange node between the scan node at the bottom and between the hash join. So it means that the scan, whatever rows it scans, it will send the rows through the network to the join so that the join can do its stuff. So this is the network transfer of the rows. Since this is the third day of the conference and you have seen this slide like five times before on five different <coughs> presentations, I guess you know what Iceberg is. You know what Iceberg can do, like hidden partitioning and uh, partition evolution, everything you know. So I won't cover these, but I would like to mention one particular functionality is that Iceberg offers a strat uh, multiple strategies for row level deletes. So let's say that you have a delete where you want to delete all the rows where the ID equals five. Then there is a copy and write approach. What it does is that searches for data files that has rows where ID equals five, and then rewrites these data files to new ones where there is no row where ID equals five. So this, when you do the, write, uh, you do the delete, uh, it actually kind of expensive because you have uh, do to scan the data and to rewrite the data. But when you read, there is no overhead because what you see is only a snapshot and some data files that you have to read. 
On the other hand, uh, merge and read doesn't touch your existing uh, data files. It writes uh, delete files next to them. And then uh, by doing this, it only requires you to read the data and uh, it's easy to write the delete files and not rewriting the data files. So it's, expens uh, it's cheap to, to delete, but expensive when, you, when it comes to reading a table that has some deletes because then you have to read the data files, you have to read the delete files, and you have to somehow merge them. So there are two ways, two kind of different equality, de uh, two kind of different uh, delete files that you can write, equality deletes and positional deletes. The difference is mainly the content. So when you, sticking with this example, uh, when you have ID equals five, then the equality delete file will contain one column for the ID and just one row with one value five. So it's, it contains the values that you want to delete. The other hand, other hand positional deletes will have a file where you want to delete this row from and the position that which, which, uh, which row that you want to delete. So for this, you also have to read and then write the delete files. Uh, from now on, we're gonna consider on equality delete, uh, 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 iceberg tables with positional delete files, sorry. Uh, so the next question is how does Impala read such tables? So Impala has its own way of reading because of uh, performance considerations. So it won't rely on the iceberg library, library to actually read the data. What it will rely on is uh, iceberg planning capabilities. So there is an iceberg API. You must probably know this plan files that is uh, Impala calls. It gives it some filters and then the table name and everything that is needed for the uh, query planning. And then in an exchange, it gets back a list of uh, data files and a list of delete files. So Impala creates some groups based on uh, how these work. And uh, there's going to be one group for the data files that doesn't have corresponding delete files. Uh, because it's easy to read them. You just create a scan node, read these, and you're done. The tricky part is when the data files can have delete files too. So how Impala handles this is that it scans the data files with corresponding delete files, and also it scans with a separate scan, the delete files themselves, and do a left anti-join. But how does it join? So please note that the delete files, positional delete files, contain a file path as a, in a position. So then you can enrich, enrich the data file scan with some new virtual columns that are actually for the file path and the position. And then you can left anti-join these. So the left anti-join condition will be on the new virtual columns coming from the left and between the actual columns coming from the right. So since this is a performance related Presentation, let's see how this performs. So we do have a cluster of a test cluster of 40 nodes where data is on S3 and our test uh, table has somewhere around eight and a half billion rows. So we deleted 10% of them in an evenly manner, meaning that uh, most of the data files have same amount of delete rows corresponding. And the query that we executed was a really, really simple one, a select count one care query because that is the one that doesn't have that much overhead on top of reading and uh, merging the delete rows with the data rows. So what you see at the bottom is a summary of that query. So you can see some similar nodes, uh, like scan at the very bottom that uh, has, scans like five, uh, eight and a half billion rows. That is for the data rows. If you move a little bit above, I'm not sure if you see the cursor here. So if you move a little bit above, there is a, another scan node that scans the deletes. And what seems suspicious is that uh, the average runtime for these queries is around 21 seconds, but if you take a look at the, uh, at the exchange nodes on top of these scans, it seems suspiciously long. So like almost seven seconds and almost uh, four seconds to distribute these rows through the network. So we can say from now on that it's really, really expensive to exchange rows through the network. So this is kind of a bottleneck. So in order to address this problem, let's move on what strategies Impala has to distribute these rows for uh, joins. So there is this partition join where we take the left-hand side as a separate unit, separate fragment, the right-hand side also as a separate unit, and the join itself as a separate unit. So as a result, in order to do the join, you're gonna have to uh, exchange all the rows from the left and all the rows from the right in a shuffled, hashed manner to send them to the join so that it can do the joining. So the network cost here, by network cost I mean the number of rows that you have to send through the network is the number of rows from the left plus the number of rows from the right. So comparing this 
uh, the broadcast join it's a little bit different where the left hand side and the join itself are considered uh, one unit so you don't have to send uh, rows through the network to from the left to the join because they are co-located on the other hand the right hand side will have to send rows in a manner that each row should be sent to all of the join nodes in the network because you don't know where to send them so the network cost here would be the number of rows from the right multiplied by the number of nodes that are executing the joins so the question here is that can we do better so can we come up with a solution where we have the advantages of both solutions what i mean here is that uh, not going to send we don't want to send the rows from the left hand side as in the broadcast joint, but we only want to send the rows once as in, uh, from the right-hand side as in the partition joint. So if you are ex excited about this, let's uh, take a look at a picture of a dog just to wake you up. <laughs> Lunch is close. Bear with me. Okay, then the answer is obviously yes, we can do that. As the catch here is that the, is the content of the positional delete files that you have. There is a file path as one column. So what if we had some kind of an information about where this actually uh, being scanned, this file that is referred from the delete file. So if we knew that, then we won't need to uh, broadcast that particular join, uh, particular road through all the network, and we could just directly send it to one or two uh, nodes where the, the uh, particular data, uh, data file is read. So in order to do that, if you remember, there is a scheduling part in Impala's coordinator that uh, schedules which data file is uh, read on which node. And it's, uh, exactly this is what we need. So we collect uh, a mapping over there, save it, and just make sure that this mapping is available on the exchange sender from this right-hand side. So then we can do that when we go through all the delete rows, get the file path column, just go into the map and see where this file path is processed or scanned, and then directly send it there. So this is what we call, the, call a directly distribution mode. And now the network cost is just simply the number of rows from that right-hand side without any kind of multipliers. So in terms of uh, actual numbers, so the broadcast join would uh, actually broadcast from the scenario uh, for 33 billion rows. The partition join is uh, an order of magnitude better. It uh, distributes or exchanges uh, 9.5 billion. But obviously, the, this new one, this directed distribution mode wins with another order, order of magnitude uh, enhancement as uh, it sends only 825 million rows through the network. So if you take a look at this uh, summary, the one exchange node is completely gone from the bottom. You don't have to exchange the rows from the right, uh, from the left, sorry. And even the uh, exchanging the delete rows got reduced a little bit because of the simplicity of the code we used. So as a result, uh, the query run times went down from 21 seconds to 12 seconds. That is actually somewhere around 42% of decrease. So this is one tweak or one performance uh, improvement that we made, but uh, we have more, other more, and this is the point where I give the mic to Zoltan to describe them. Okay, thank you, Gabor. And hey, everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, I will start this talk with this one trillion row challenge, and through this example, I'm trying to give you insights how we are uh, optimizing Impulse performance. Okay, so about this challenge, it is a quite simple challenge. The difficulty is its scale. So you need to have a table with one trillion records. But the table itself is very simple, like it has two columns, a station column and a measure column. And the challenge is to execute this very simple select group by query uh, on top of that table. So actually what this, uh, uh, what this query does is basically it tests how your query engine can read uh, a certain kind of table. In case of us, it is the iceberg table, and we want to see how Impala performs reading the iceberg table. So this challenge is perfect for us. Okay, and here you can see how Impala scales when we are changing the number of uh, executor nodes. Uh, I tried Impala with 10, 40, and 64 uh, executors, and with 10 executors, the execution time is almost 10 minutes, but uh, as you can see, with additional executors, uh, Impala scales nicely. Okay, but uh, this 
the challenge was quite simple, maybe too simple, and we also want to measure in Paras performance for Iceberg V2 tables when there are uh, deleted records. Okay, to do that, to meaningfully delete from the table or update data in that table, we added these two extra uh, columns to the base table. Uh, so basically a timestamp and the sensor type. Uh, we also partitioned this table via icebergs partitioning transformations like day, truncate, and bucket. Bucket means hash partitioning. And the good thing about iceberg is that you still just need to insert these data values. <coughs> and uh, the query engine and the, the iceberg library uh, will do the partitioning uh, for you. Okay, so we executed three deletes and three update statements, quite large deletes and updates with the merge on read technique, so we wrote position delete files. And at the end of these operations, uh, we had one trillion data records in the table, out of which almost 70 billion records were deleted by position delete records. <coughs> okay, so let's see how Impala performs when there are that many deletes. Uh, we used uh, 40 uh, executor nodes, and just as a reminder, without the delete records, it took like uh, two and a half minutes to execute this. But when we have this many uh, position delete records, the same select group by query takes like seven minutes and 15 seconds. So almost three times X is the slowness. Okay, <clears throat> at the bottom half of the screen, you can see a query summary. So for every query, Impala can provide you uh, a summary of the query's execution. Or if you want to have more detailed information than that, uh, there is the profile command for that. So Impala can give you a query profile. Uh, which contains tons of information uh, about the query execution. <coughs> okay, and we can see that these operators, these join build and exchange operators took most of the time uh, in the query. Okay, but to explain how to optimize these, uh, I need to explain some more detail about how uh, this join for iceberg v2 table between data records and position delete records work in Impala. So usually when you do a join, you have a build operator at the right side of your join. The purpose of, your, of this build operator is to gather all the information from the right side and store it in a data structure that can be efficiently used by the join operator. So in this case, the build operator pulls all the position delete records that are relevant uh, for this join operator. Since we are using the directed mode, uh, the executors only get the position delete records that are needed on that certain executor. And the data structure that the build operator builds is a simple hash table from data file to a sorted vector of positions. A position is an int 64T in C++. Okay. <laughs> And the bad thing about this build operator is that when this uh, is still running, so when this uh, final data structure is not done yet, the join part and the scan part of the query you cannot run. So the build operator is blocking the, uh, the join fragment. Uh, in most queries, it is not that problematic because on top of the join, you, if you remember, you can also have a union operator and in the union operator, there can be another scan operator for the data files that don't have corresponding delete files. So in most cases, uh, these can run in parallel. Okay, scan operator produces row batches. A row batches by default 1,024 rows. As Gabor already mentioned, these are decorated with these virtual column input file in file position. Every row in a single row batch produced by a scan uh, refers to the same data file, so the input filing will be the same, and also the file positions uh, will be ordered inside row batches. Uh, the join operator takes advantage of that, so it gets the row batches from the scan operator. Uh, it needs to do one hash lookup 
in the data structure from the build operator, which is the data file to uh, for that uh, positions. And one after that uh, lookup, it kind of does a merge join between the uh, between the row batch from the scan and the and the ordered positions. Okay. But as we saw, building that data structure is quite uh, expensive. And with analyzing the query summary, query profile, and also using standard performance tools like Perf and Frame Graphs, it turned out that we are building the, uh, the data structure inefficiently. So if you remember, it is a vector of positions. We are adding the positions one by one. When we reach the capacity of the C++ stead vector, uh, then we need to reallocate uh, the vector, copy the, uh, the original contents, then we can add the new data. So it is quite time consuming. And also the final sort that can be quite slow if you, are, if you have that many elements. Okay, so the solution to that is simply using an intermediate data structure of vector of vectors. So you don't need to, <coughs> to copy everything that you had uh, during reallocations and also not adding the positions one by one to this intermediate structure, but we can also add uh, uh, batches of positions to that structure. And also, when we are doing the final sort, uh, we can detect how many uh, join and scan fragments are blocked on that build operator. And since these threads don't do anything, uh, we can use that many threads to parallelize this final sorting. Okay, so with these optimizations, uh, we were able to reduce the total duration from seven minutes, 15 seconds to, uh, to around uh, five minutes. And also there was a big improvement uh, in the join build. Now it's only one minute and 40 seconds compared to the original one. Okay, uh, let's talk about some future possibilities. So. If you ever needed to use a large bitmap, I recommend you to try this roaring bitmap. Uh, this is a data structure, uh, highly optimized and highly op uh, compressed for storing large bitmaps. And we are planning to use it uh, instead of the sorted in 64, which can consume too much memory. So we hope that roaring bitmap make, will make the builds faster. We hope it will make the join faster. But what we know for sure, the memory consumption will be decreased by a lot because these vector of things can take a lot of memory. Okay, ob about the exchange operators, uh, these also consume uh, uh, quite a lot of time. And the reason is that for serializing the position records is very suboptimal in Impala, because what Impala does is that it gets the position records, which is a file pass and position. And for, it, for every record, when it serializes, it writes a string slot, int slot, then copies the file pass, the string data. Then for the next row, it also string slot, int slot, and copies the string data. And in most of the cases, the string data is the same uh, that was uh, earlier being used. So, uh, unnecessary uh, allocations, too much memory is used, too much string copying, and, and, and at the end we have a huge buffer that we also need to compress, so it is uh, quite suboptimal, I would say. Um, I have a working proof of concept implementation by just deduplicating the, the neighboring string values. And I didn't have the time to do it on a large scale, like on the one trillion row, but locally with that simple optimization, uh, this was the improvement that you can see here. There is the mouse pointer. And uh, yeah. Okay. And in the abstract, we also promised that we are going to compare Impala to another uh, open source engine. Uh, we are not planning to name the other engine, so let's call it Engine X. With <laughs> uh, the, the TPC DS benchmark with 1000 scale, so it's around 10 terabytes. For both Impala and Nginx, we use one coordinator, 10 executors, we disabled caching, instance type was the same. And what you can know about Nginx 
is, it is a very popular open source SQL query engine. It has a similar architecture to Impala, so in that sense it is an apple to apple comparison. It has a distributed MPP style architecture, but unlike Impala, it has a vectorized uh, engine, so internally it stores the data differently than Impala. And uh, tried other few engines, but Nginx was the fa fastest among the alternatives. Okay, so you can see the TPCDS results in Polo compared to Nginx. The total duration means that I took the averages of, the, of each query and summed them up. And to get this duration for Impala, it was 15 minutes and half a minute. For Nginx, it was more than 20 minutes. You can also see the bar graph of that. So if you are using Impala, you can get a 1.3x speed up compared to engine X. And at the bottom, you can see the query by query comparison. And yeah, most of the queries are uh, um, faster with Impala by big time. There's only a few queries where, where engine X was the faster. But, the, but even in those queries, it wasn't a big difference. Okay, so thanks everyone. Thanks for coming.